Michael Cohen may have pleaded guilty to lying, but he still wants us to believe that it was all the president's fault. The Wall Street Journal reporting that Cohen paid an IT firm to rig two polls for Donald Trump before he entered the presidential race. Cohen allegedly handed the owner of Red Finch Solutions, LLC, a blue Walmart bag with $13,000 in party cash and a stinky boxing glove allegedly belonging to a Brazilian mixed martial artist. Cohen, well, he didn't deny it, but he was quick to pass the buck, tweeting, quote, As for the WSJ article on poll rigging, what I did was at the discretion of and for the sole benefit of real Donald Trump POTUS. I truly regret my blind loyalty to a man who doesn't deserve it. Cohen claims he paid the firm a total of $50,000, and all of it was by check, but the firm's owner says no. He only received thirteen grand. The Journal reporting that Cohen asked for and received a $50,000 reimbursement from the Trump Organization. This prompted the president's current lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, to tell the Journal, quote, the president did not know about this. If it happened, the real takeaway from your story is, didn't he steal $37,000? So did the president's former fixer fix the polls and pocket a few grand along the way? And if so, who's really to blame? Joining me now, Fox News national security strategist, former deputy assistant to President Donald J. Trump and author of Why We Fight, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Welcome back. Thank you, Kennedy. How do you fudge polls? <laughs> how, how do you get to be a convicted liar and a thief? and then expect us to believe you just days before you go to a federal prison to be locked up. This man is pathetic. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's something. He started the, uh, the handle Women for Cohen. And uh, <laughs> let me just read uh, their, their tagline. Uh, strong, pit bull, sex symbol, no nos nonsense, business oriented, and ready to make a difference. And this is still an active account. Good job, Michael. Pitbull. Is this an, are we suddenly in an SNL skit, Kennedy? I know you were from MTV, but have we just suddenly moved into stand-up comedy? No, I think this is, uh, I think this is funnier than the current SNL landscape. And I yes, think that's why, that's, that's sure. I think that's why late night shows and sketch shows are struggling because the real stuff is funnier than anything absurd you could come up with in a writer's room. I mean, th this is all so insane. And, uh, you know, what about, what about the guy John Gouger and his bag of cash? Well, look, again, what, it's exactly as the, the, the nation's mayor said. I mean, Rudy nailed it. Not only is this guy a liar, but he can't even get his lies straight as to what he said he was doing. And it just proves that he's a thief as well as a liar. So it's, it's a sad, let, let's be Christian about it. This is a sad, pathetic man, and he's going to prison, and he's just clutching at straws for some kind of relevance before he's locked away for the next three years. And he will, uh, he will it, it seems, receive a good smiting in prison. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that uh, Mr. Cohen will be the, uh, the gang leader in prison. Let's just put it like that. No, it doesn't appear to be so. But let's talk about Rudy Giuliani a little bit. This is a, this is a person with whom I interfaced briefly in the 1990s. Almost lost my job. But uh, thank goodness for Providence and a forgiving Sumner Redstone at the time. Uh, but why is Rudy Giuliani out there on behalf of the president? Because it seems like every time he goes in front of cameras, he makes things worse and he makes the story about him. I'm not sure that's fair. I'm not, I'm not sure that he makes the story about himself. Everybody needs, you know, I, I was in the Oval Office with the president today and, you know, he's, he's a little bit busy right now and everybody mm -hmm. needs a Rudy Giuliani uh, on their team. And uh, whenever I see the Rudy, you know, I don't know about you, you've got your own personal history. I get a warm feeling for this man. Mm -hmm. uh, Americans relate to him. New, York, New Yorkers relate to him. And he just shoots from they the hip relate, half the time. They relate, well, that's to, okay. they relate to a time when the city ran more smoothly. They, they, yes, they, yes. And, and that Rudy Giuliani, there are people who long for that Rudy sometimes because there are other times when he doesn't do his client a great service by going out and, and saying that maybe there were people on the campaign who were colluding with Russia. That's uh, that, But that's not what he said. Well, it's it's, it's, it's a said. classic... 
it's a classic selective quote. If you watch the whole interview then uh, here's, in context, here's the cure say, to that. He, here's the cure to selective quotes. Don't say things that can selectively be abstracted to make you look like a weirdo. Not everybody can be as smooth as Kennedy. I am so far from smooth. I am as as prickly and uh, as I mean I mean when it coarse. comes to talking extemporaneously on live television. Yeah, it's, no, I, you know, I, it I takes say skill. I, I say some doozies. And I, I guess I'm giving Rudy Giuliani that's why no one would ever hire me to uh, defend the president or to be his mouthpiece because I would say a lot of really interesting stuff. That I, would get I don't know. I think you could be quite effective. You want me to have a word with uh, the big man? <laughs> no. no. I hear this is his favorite uh, primetime cable news show. And for that, I want to thank him. I'll, I'll, I'll get the message to for him. For sure. He doesn't watch anything else at 9 o'clock Eastern. Sebastian Gorka, thank you so much for your time. God bless. Thank you. You too. Thank you.